inflation is said to be about 8%, but that's probably bollocks. It's probably more close to 17% if you want to really look at, you know, look at just coffee, the, the, the coffee chart, look at the wheat chart, look at all these um, consumables. They're, they're, they're on their 50s or 60% increases for the year. Yeah, Santa, so just show you sort of your thoughts, I guess, on the on the, the, the long-term prospects of Bitcoin and how significant it still is in the overall market. Yeah, it's a good question. And I guess we need to look at prior to, if we, we zoom out, you can see my chart, and I'll, I'll remove yeah. the S&P 500, right? And we, we look at prior to its last advance, which was July, 20, um, July 2021, but mm. quite a bit's changed since then. Inflation is said to be about 8%, but that's probably bollocks. It's probably more close to 17%. If you want to really look at, you know, look at just coffee, the, the, the coffee chart, look at the wheat chart, look at all these um, consumables. They're, they're, they're on their 50s or 60% increases for the year. Um, so inflation is one thing. And then we also look at the bond yield. So the, the debt, the short-term debt is, that's up like a thousand percent. If you look at the, I'll, I'll just quickly jump on a, on a, on a, just a two year bond yield. Mm. Um, now, those two things together, I think it's just it, the money that we had a year ago where we may have been able to, or that retail, or it, well, maybe not insto, but the retail side of the market, they may have had that money spare when they were getting their paychecks, when they were getting all these um, COVID subsidies. But now we're 12 months in the front and the, the you know short-term debt is jumping, the, the Fed's raising rates, inflation is now kicking people as well so maybe now that money is not there anymore if that makes sense so yeah. i think it's just going to be a, it's just going to be more challenging for the money to pour into crypto because i think the market cap of the crypto market's like two trillion right now right if it wants to go and break all-time highs it needs to hit that 3.5 trillion and that needs to be net buy that needs to take on all the selling that comes along the way and can that happen in the next two years when we have stagflation that's that's my concern yeah, that, that's an interesting point of view to tie it to sort of the uh, global fundamental situation. And that raises the question of how much uh, crypto is, is bought in the, in sort of retail speculation. And, and it sort of ties into the stock market, wasn't it? All the hedge fund, I mean, we're so sympathetic to them, aren't we? All the hedge fund managers and institutions were moaning that uh, so much retail money was in the market, particularly in the US, wasn't it? Look at how Robin Hood and things like that blew up, particularly with those sort of meme stocks, wasn't it? Like GameStop and things like that. It just shows how much retail money can influence things when, when it gets behind it. And, it, and, you know, and obviously we don't know who's necessarily investing in crypto, but it could well be the same case there. So, yeah, that's an interesting point of view, the fact that there may not be that available sort of uh, influx of cash to sort of drive crypto up to the sort of figures that people do sort of band around, if you like. Yeah, if, if you look at the chart now, like that purple horizontal uh, vertical line was the exact prior the exact time when btc took off uh, july 2021 and this is the two year this is the two year bond yield and that's right that's gone up a thousand and eighty four percent in that time so anybody that took on debt or short-term debt anything on that side to buy these cryptos or buy property or buy any of these assets um they probably don't have the cash anymore or, uh, but they may have the cash but they don't have maybe the purchasing power that they did at least 12 months ago when you combo everything together and that's why i'm a little bit bearish on I'm, i mean i'm bullish for this uh next couple of uh days but i'm actually bearish longer term um maybe to bit bitcoin at like twenty five thousand, maybe even lower all right thank you very much a couple of comments hi guys loving the trading battle to come background thank you very much for that simon you look devilishly handsome as always yeah excellent we like that comment from martin hi i trade forex excellent lots of people do um, Nick, just your sort of uh, brief thoughts on the, the sort of long-term prospects uh, of Bitcoin and these sort of mainstream coins that most people sort of have uh, experience with. Uh, you know, I tend to agree. I think uh, macro is kind of looking bearish just because of the economy. Uh, it's... It's probably not going to be, in my opinion, it's probably not going to be like it used to be. Uh, where we just go into a crypto winter, there's absolutely no volume for two years, and then things just pick back up again. Uh, we're seeing more and more adoption, uh, institutional adoption in crypto. And I believe now that the institutions are into Bitcoin, it's going to behave more and more like a traditional asset. So while I do think we're going to get a lot of downside uh, in Bitcoin, you know, 20K is totally possible. 
Uh, I do think we're still going to see some pretty pretty decent volume throughout, and it's still going to make it a still going to be a tradable asset class uh, over the next few years. But is it going to go to all time highs? Probably not. Uh, I really don't don't see it happening. Uh, but I do think April overall is bullish. I mean, we still have earnings season coming. Uh, we're still probably we're probably going to get a bit of a bullish move in the stock market. Uh, and if you look back historically, uh, April tends to be a very bullish month. It's the second most bullish month of the year, not only for Bitcoin, but uh, just for for equities and everything. I think uh, June or July is the first most bullish month and uh, April is the yeah. second. And that's just because, yeah, we're going to get uh, earnings reports coming out. Uh uh, I do, I do see April probably being a little bit bullish. Uh, we are dipping right now on Bitcoin, but I do see it recovering a little. Uh, but over the next few days, I'm definitely bearish on Bitcoin. Yeah, I mean, I think I think you know you've been a veteran yourself. Um, you know, I mean, how many times have we seen the market do things which it probably shouldn't do? You know, I, I alluded to the yeah. market will stay rational and you say solvent. I mean, the stock markets. I mean, I use the US mainly as, as sort of the global pulse of the world. Aren't a million miles away from all time highs, are they? You know, if we had a little bit, I guess sort of hopeful resolution with the Ukraine-Russian situation. I wouldn't be surprised to see the sort of uh, stock markets hit those all-time highs. And I think, yeah, I mean, but my experience with Bitcoin is the fact that, you know, when we when it started getting really popular in 2016, 17, and it exploded, and it was a case of, is it going to be technical or tradable as an asset? And I think you've answered that question. It is. And obviously, we have the, fu the futures market now on Bitcoin as well, which gives it that underpinning of sort of legitimacy, which does give access, you know, to the big institutions and things like that to be able to buy yeah. huge volumes and have that have the safety of it because they're going through a you know regulated exchange. Exactly.